So first of all, how come uh, you wanted to do a movie about Morris? Well, I met John Morris about in this August 2009, and we had a pretty unusual meeting. We met by chance in a restaurant one night, and he was sitting having dinner by himself, and I was sitting having dinner with a friend who was an editor. And we were talking about film, and he overheard our conversation and started joining in and asked, could he join us? So that's how we met. And then he invited us back to his house for a drink. So we went, and uh, then I just saw what he did when I got back to his home. He had an amazing library and lots of interesting photographs. So he started to tell us about his career. And when I went back to Ireland, I bought his book. And uh, yeah, it took me a couple of weeks to read it, read it slowly, and then I just called him. In fact, when I finished the book, he sent me a message. He sent me an email saying it was really nice to meet you, and I had just sort of finished his book at the time and asked him had anybody made a film about his book and would he let me try. So he's like, yeah, sure. That was a Monday, and he's like, can you be here by Wednesday? So <laughs> we just went to Paris to meet him, me and a friend who was a... PhD in photography, so she knew a lot more about the subject than I did at the time. Um, I kind of feel like I've done a PhD in photography after making the film. So that's how we met. What do you think about uh, photojournalism's development if you compare it today from the time with the time where Morris worked and Kappa and yeah, what's sure. well? I, I suppose there's a lot more of it today. There's a lot more people taking photographs today. Everybody's got a camera and the whole turn into digital has just changed that there's just such a multitude of pictures. But what there still is lacking, I think, and I think John Morris agrees, is great picture editing. So at the time, when he was working for the New York Times or when he was working for Life magazine, picture editing was considered a really art form. and. Um, and now with the internet and we're just so flooded with news that there's not a lot of curating that news. That anybody can post anything or write a blog or share their photographs in that way, which is great on one hand, but on the other hand, it's you know, it's the the thoughts behind the pictures that really tell a story or expose a truth or or break some news. So I suppose it's yeah, picture editing. <laughs> what do you think is the uh biggest difference between still picture and moving pictures? Oh gosh. Well, I think it's harder to tell a story in one picture, in one frame. So it has to be really good if it's going to tell a whole story in just one image. I suppose with the benefit of you know, moving film is that we have longer, greater space, more room to tell a story or to let that story unfold. It's just different art forms, I suppose. So, but what would you say is the strength for still picture contra moving picture? What, what's like, what's the best thing with still picture and what is the best thing with moving picture? Well, I, one of the people, one of the photographers that we interviewed in our film was Jane Evelyn Atwood and unfortunately she never made it into the final version of the film and there was no other reason for that other than that she wasn't a war photographer. But one thing she said and it really rings true to me is that it's about having something to say. So if the picture isn't saying something of importance, then there really isn't much power to it, or the image really is it's just not going to say anything. So it's the people behind the camera, or the intelligence behind who's taking the photograph, what it is they want to say, that really creates impact. So, but did the movie turn out as you visualized, like when you start thinking that you would actually do a movie about Morris? Well, John was really old, you know, he was 92 when I met him first, so there was a bit of a concern of getting his story down really, really quickly. So that was my major concern because he kept telling me, you know, I'm not going to be here forever, hurry up. <laughs> He's got a great sense of humor. So, my initial... Um, strive was to, to just get his story down so that was the first thing that we filmed and then it was yeah about a year and a half later before the story started to take shape and I got to know John and I got to know the other photographers that were involved so yeah initially it was going to be his professional story but then something happened over the course of the time that I was making the film John fell in love and he was 95 when he fell in love so 
that kind of changed the direction of the story in a really great way for me, so that was fun. It's great, thank you so much. Okay, yeah, thank you.